I know how challenging learning anatomy can be. Everyone makes you feel like you have to know how the bones and the muscles are structured, but that can take weeks or even months before you can start with what you really want to do, which is just expressing your creativity. And before you know, you lost all your motivation and feel completely overwhelmed. But from my own experience, I can tell that you don't need to know all these details. Later on, you can refine your skills with lecture. But for now, I will show you how to break it down to the basics. And what proportion guidelines you can always supply. First of all, we will create this together. It's a breakdown of the human body, but therefore we will need to get an understanding for simple three-dimensional objects like boxes, blobs and cylinders. Grab any box-shaped thing you can find at home and try to draw your box in different angles. If you struggle drawing from a real reference, then take a photo, import it into your drawing software and trace it. But then try to draw it freely too. Okay, now to the blobs. You can grab an apple or an egg for that. We will investigate them because of the important lines here. I will call them grid lines because they work like a grid you lay over your curved object. They can be used to create the illusion of depth by showing the viewer the perspective they look at. If I look from downside at the egg, then the curves are bent upwards and when I look at it from above, then they are bent downwards. The same works sideways. The lines are always bent away from the direction from which you look at the object. This is very important, for example for their face, to show in which direction the person is looking or also for drawing boobs correctly. Now the same with cylinders. Any canned food will do for that or whatever is cylindrical you can find. Now you're prepared for a real human body. I always recommend using a drawing reference. I know it can be difficult to find a good one, but try searching Pinterest for them. Or maybe go to a shopping website, then to the section for swimwear or underwear or maybe even sportswear. A good channel for poses I found is also the Pose Archives on Twitter. And what I just found out, Canva has so many good references as well. If you want, I share the link to this document in the description. I would say this is a really good one. Let's take our photo and try to break it down to the basic shapes we just learned. First import the photo to your drawing program and lower the opacity. Now we will try to break down her body into simple three-dimensional shapes. Starting with a ball for her head and adding the grid lines to show where she is looking at. For her upper body draw a box. Good that we practice how to draw them in three dimensions. The shoulders can be depicted as balls and the arms are made of two cylinders and if you want then you can link them with a little ball too. The hands are just blobs in the shape of mitten gloves. And her hips can be shown in <laughs> with this triangular shape. Legs are drawn like the arms with cylinders and a ball for the joint. The feet are just um, feet-shaped blobs. Here I forgot this one hand. The neck is a short cylinder as well. Now let me add this green line. It is called rhythm line and it shows the overall energy and the direction of the pose. If you want you can also add the grid lines. Then you will get a better understanding of the perspective. Okay, and yet it is time to redraw this figure freely. If you have a hard time, then you can use such guidelines for more orientation. And this shows you where approximately the body parts are located. You can also copy the rhythm line to your side of the drawing. The best features of digital art are definitely the selection and the liquify tool. I can promise the next time you do this, you will already be a lot better and it will feel way more easy. Also, the pose doesn't have to look exactly like the reference. It now has a unique touch of you and your own style of drawing. Okay, but now to the outlines of our body sketch. For this, you can investigate your reference again. Just trace and study the outlines. And you will be surprised at how some lines are unexpectedly curved. Now you see how crucial it is to study references in this way before you attempt to draw poses more freely. Because you might never notice those small but very important details. Now it's your turn to draw those lines with the help of your initial sketch, which you can use as a guide. It might not feel like that, but your brain already stored a lot of information in your so-called muscle memory. And if you keep feeding the storage, then you will later even be able to draw such stuff freely and without consciously knowing all these details. So let's do that right away with another example. A side view. I will draw the woman in the white outfit. Same scheme as before. 
break the reference down to simple shapes and draw them yourself. And then study the reference more closely and transfer those details on top of your own sketch. Let's try that for some more tricky poses. It also works for curvy women. Break down, redraw, inspect and add details. Or here for a sitting pose. Break it down, redraw, inspect and add outlines. Just practice and apply this technique from now on. Then you should be able to draw basic anatomy and unleash all your creativity for character design. In the beginning I showed you the basic rules for body proportions already and now we will talk about them in detail. First we're going to divide the body into eight equal segments, each one being the length of the head. Generally humans are around seven to eight heads tall, but eight heads are considered especially captivating for women. This extra length comes from the leg, so we'll need to make a few adjustments here. Now let's draw lines right in the middle of each of these segments. The waist and the elbows are approximately located between line 2 and 3. The crotch, where the legs merge into the upper body, is located between line 3 and 4. Knees are between lines 4 and 6 and the ankles of the feet between 7 and 8. The wrist is about on line 4, but keep in mind that in this particular example the arm is bent and therefore somewhat shortened. A little under waist and elbow we have the navel. Oh and I almost forgot that the breasts are around line 2. Let's take a closer look at horizontal distances. If we duplicate the head in this way, then we'll see that the shoulders are about as wide as two head widths. As for the width of the hips, it's generally about the same as the shoulder width, although I tend to draw the shoulders slightly wider, but usually the hips are slightly wider than the shoulders. For the hands the rule is that they are a little shorter than the length of the head, but in this example the hand is closed into a fist, so it's a little shorter. Finally, the upper leg is typically, uh, typically a bit longer than the lower one. I'll see you in the next video.